Generation 4 Nuclear Reactors. Why do we need them? Who's going to lead the effort? What are they? And when can we expect them? Nuclear power has been a consistent and reliable source for energy for many decades, and yet its future growth is still uncertain. But in the last decade, there has been an increase in interest for nuclear power as a solution to global warming, caused in large part by the burning of fossil fuels such as coal and natural gas. Now, the purpose of this presentation is to give you an overview of how the nuclear world collectively came together to look at the future of nuclear power. The first question that we ask is why? The U.S. Energy Information Agency expects global demand for energy to increase by nearly 50% by 2040. Now, nuclear power is not expected to overtake fossil fuels in the near future, as fossil fuels are still going to account for around 78% of all energy use in 2040. But the U.S. Energy Agency does report that these fossil fuels represent over 40% of all carbon emissions, and this gives nuclear a better chance at gaining a larger piece of the global energy pie. Now in this next graph from the U.S. Information Agency's 2016 Global Forecast by Energy Type, you can see that all energy types are going to grow with coal tapering off toward the year 2040 as supply demands become an issue. And of course green energies are growing a little bit as well. The expectation is that natural gas will become more prevalent as supplies increase, but both are major competitors to nuclear power. Green energy also is a competitor for nuclear power, but it has the limitations. Now, nuclear energy is clean in regards to carbon emissions and is not subject to unreliable weather or climate conditions, and it really has no supply issues. Now, the U.S. Department of Energy does expect nuclear to grow, possibly doubling by the year 2040, albeit in emerging markets such as China and India is where we'll see the most growth. Who is going to lead this effort? Ten nations preparing today for tomorrow's energy needs. The Generation 4 International Forum, GIF, was initiated in 2000 and a formal charter was signed in 2001 with the original ten members. GIF adopted a technology roadmap in 2002, later revised in 2014, which was the basis for selecting six nuclear energy systems for further development. The selected systems rely on a variety of reactor, energy conversion, and fuel cycle technologies. The selections include a closed and open loop fuel cycles, as well as a wide range of reactor sizes, pressures, and temperatures. Now, the GIF goals include sustainability, waste, economics, safety, reliability, and proliferation resistance. In July of 2011, the 13 members agreed to sign an extension of the charter signaling the wish to continue to cooperate in the research and development of Generation 4 reactor designs. And as recently as June of 2016, Australia signed the charter, thus becoming the 14th member. Now, the GIF goals include eight technology goals that are generic but critical for all future design. They are divided into four broad categories, which include sustainable and effective. The Generation 4 nuclear systems must provide sustainable energy through long-term availability of systems combined with effective fuel utilization and meet clean energy objectives. This also includes minimizing and managing nuclear waste. The plan is to reduce waste radioactivity half-lives from thousands of years to hundreds of years. Generation 4 nuclear systems must be economically practical. They must have a clear life cycle cost advantage over other energy systems in order to be a viable energy option, and they must mitigate financial risk as compared to other energy projects. Safety and reliability. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident has emphasized the importance of designing nuclear systems with the highest level of safety. Generation 4 nuclear energy systems must excel in safety and reliability and have a very low likelihood of reactor core damage. This would include automated protection systems and the elimination 
of the need for offsite emergency response. Proliferation resistance. These new systems will increase assurances that they are very unattractive as a route for theft of weapons grade materials. This includes providing physical protection against acts of terrorism as well. What are the options? What are the six options that Generation 4 Forum came up with? Well, these options include six selected types. Gas-cooled fast reactors, lead-cooled fast reactors, molten salt reactors, supercritical water-cooled reactors, sodium-cooled fast reactors, and very high temperature reactors. Now, the key differences in these six concepts are illustrated in this chart. All six concepts use either fast or thermal neutron spectrums. They have an assortment of coolants, the moderators from helium to water to sodium. The temperature range is between 500 Celsius to well over 1000 Celsius. And this assortment includes high, very high, and low pressure systems with a different assortment of fuel types. Now, we have open and closed fuel cycle systems. Now, the open systems are more what we use in generation three that are currently on the market where once the fuel is depleted, we let it cool and then we find a storage facility for it. On the closed loop systems, we will actually take part of that fuel and we'll recycle it and reuse it back into some of the fast reactor types. So this has an added benefit. Now you'll notice the sizes range from smaller than you would expect to typical 1500 megawatt sizes. These smaller ones have an advantage that they're cheaper, could be built faster, and you could get them into some remote areas and some emerging markets. And then you'll also notice in uses, hydrogen's listed. The generation of hydrogen could be used in future developments of hydrogen cars and other hydrogen energy markets. So there's another added benefit. Now, these reactor concepts are currently at various levels of development. The first deployments for Generation 4 reactors are not expected before 2025. However, the long-term potential of these projects is enormous. For example, one molten salt reactor designed to consume one ton of uranium per year could supply enough hydrogen to supply three million passenger vehicles. The waste from the plant's years of operation would occupy half the volume of a typical domestic refrigerator. The radioactivity of this waste would diminish to background levels in about 500 years. These have huge implications on the nuclear industry and answering the question, where do we put the waste problem, is one of our biggest issues in nuclear power today. GIF members and their nuclear focus. Now, as mentioned before, we currently have 13 countries who signed the framework agreement. This is an international collaboration on research and development of generation four nuclear energy systems. Now in the graph above, you see a section labeled systems arrangements. These system arrangements have been established through steering committees to implement the research and development for each of the Generation 4 reactor concepts with participation from GIF members interested in contributing to a collaborative R&D effort. Each system steering committee plans to integrate R&D projects contributing to the development of that system. Now, the participants in the system committees and in projects sign agreements governing the intellectual property rights and other matters in order to work cooperatively on the concepts. The GIF Charter and the Framework Agreement allow for the participation of organizations from non-GIF countries on all research projects, but not on system steering committees. Now, two of the reactor types don't have a system arrangement in place yet, so we've signed another document called the Memoranda of Understanding and a couple of signatories are represented on these two reactor types. The final question is, when can we expect Generation 4 reactors? On this timeline chart below, you can see that Generation 1 started in the, around 1950, Generation 2 came around in the mid-70s, and there's a few of them 
still out there and generation three and three plus are still currently being built and are very popular so generation four is in its infancy we don't expect these to be in service until probably 20 to 30 years from now but these generation four reactors will be the prevalent reactors built in the future because of the stated reasons before. Now, there is a lot of excitement about Generation 4 reactors in terms of sustainability, safety, cost, and collaboration. Generation 3 reactors will remain the popular choice in the interim. However, Generation 4 will be an opportunity to build more sustainable nuclear reactors in the long term. These reactors can meet the energy needs of the world with an international collaboration and combined effort. As the graphic shows, the present is filled with Gen 3 reactors, but Gen 4 is only a couple decades away and it will lead us into the 22nd century. A reference that's cited can be found here. Click on the links to find out more information. And this concludes my report on generation four nuclear reactors. Why do we need them? Who's going to take charge of this effort? What are they? And when can we expect them?